Welcome to the Enlightened Musician Podcast, a podcast all about the music business and learning how to turn your art into an equally successful business, flipping the mentality of a starving artist into a profitable, sustainable career. Each week, we will interview someone that is excelling in their field and talk tips and tricks on how you can implement that for yourself. Because honestly, how can you know what you don't know until you've been enlightened? Hey, we're back. Cameo here, live from the basement. Oh my gosh, you guys, this is a new episode of the Enlightened Musician Podcast. I'm so excited for these next guests. Uh, they are indie funk fusion band that were based in Charlotte, Winston-Salem area. Loved that when they were here, but they just moved to Clearwater, Florida. So I got to talk to them before they made that move out and talk about their new album. So let's get into it. All right, you guys, I'm so excited to have good friends on Bad Cameo. You guys are releasing a new album. How excited are you on a scale from one to 10 of excitement? About 14, I would say. Ooh. Good. I was yeah. going to say, if not, you're not advertising yourself. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> that's fantastic. I get to see you guys on Instagram all the time, and you guys are killing the promo. I love just like watching you guys advertise. <laughs> I almost got more prepped up for the album via the promotion than even just listening to the music, but listen to the songs and they are killer. You guys really good. You combined like three genres together, which uh, you said it was like indie funk fusion. Am I right on that? Yeah, that's what we like to use as an umbrella term. But if you listen to the album, you'll hear more than just indie, more than just funk and more than just fusion. Um, and actually, we should, I guess we should tell them what our motto here at Bad yeah. Cameo is. It's uh, fuse, fuse whatever, whatever you got into this music. music. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, and as you go through the album, you'll hear disco. You'll hear some, like, Daft Punk kind of funk. Um, you'll hear some jazz pop, some samba. And so we really like to use all of our different um, genres that have inspired us as artists mm-hmm. into the kind of music we create. That's fantastic. Yeah, every song just kind of has its own little spin to it. And I love that. And you guys are awesome with that. I just want to go back into time a little bit. Let's actually just talk about how you guys even formed and how this all started. Because I know you it's like 2017. So I didn't know you guys then. We've just met like a year ish ago. So tell me, bring me in. What happened? Where did you guys start? So I went to Wake Forest for uh, music actually using my degree. Thumbs up to that. <laughs> um, and Londo also went to Wake. Now he was a good bit younger than me. So we didn't actually meet until after I graduated. And a mutual friend linked us up and we just kind of started jamming in a basement and really took to each other's playing styles. And you want to take it over from there? Yeah. Lando? I mean, it was just like <laughs> casual jamming in the basement, in an attic, two man jam, nothing too fancy, but just vibing off each other's artistic taste. Um, but we kind of saw that there was somewhere we could go with this. And we played mm-hmm. you know, some small gigs, like a charity event. But then we ended up finding this guy on a special site. Isn't that right, Dan? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my story to fame is that I am Craigslist Dan. Yep. So oh my um, gosh. When, I, when I moved down to Winston from uh, Virginia Tech after, after going to school there, um, yeah, I made a post basically saying, like, I will come to your house and play your drums but I promise I'm good and I'm not that weird. So, so this post is on Craigslist and I got a lot of hits on that. And uh, some of them were, some of the jam sessions I went to were a little weird. Some were creepy. I went to like some storage lockers. I went like 30 (laughs) minutes out of town. It was, it was a weird time, but then I jammed with Jeff and a couple other guys and I, I was like, hey, man, this guy's pretty cool. And he didn't creep me out too much. So. <laughs> just a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit. Just the right amount. And here I mean, go. you always have to be careful with Craigslist because I've had my fair share of bandmates. And um, man, I learned some lifelong lessons from Craigslist bandmates. But I'm really glad that <laughs> you are not that experienced Craigslist fan. That is fantastic. I just realized, too, no one really knows. Every, no one can see your faces right now. So, like, everyone introduce yourselves real quick. And maybe they can tell from the timbre of your voice who you are. Sure. No, so you've already met Dan. You already heard about him. Craigslist yep. Dan. Yep. I'm the Craigslist guy. I'm the drummer and the hype man. Nice. Um, my name is Lando. I play the guitar and I sing occasionally on the bass. <laughs> oh. uh-huh. I'm Jeff. I play keys, bass, computer, whatever. <laughs> I love you. I am the everything in between, man. I love <laughs> I always say with one of my bandmates because it's like, well, he plays piano, um, 
He plays Ableton, uh, <laughs> everything in between. Nice. That's really excited. Um, let's actually go into the album just dropped, right? That's right. Yep. Oh. On Friday, October 30th. So it's how many songs total for you guys? It's a nine stack track. So what made you do nine tracks? Like what inspired the whole entire album? Like why nine songs? Why those songs? We should go back then to April because we had a 10 day tour that got canceled. It was up and down the East coast. Mm -hmm. Um, Obviously it got canceled because of COVID and Mm -hmm. we still had the time off. We were still working at the time. So we decided, okay, let's take this 10 day tour and dedicate ourselves to recording new tracks for an album. Mm -hmm. Um, And we had plenty of songs that we would perform live that people asked us, when is it coming out? When is it coming out? So it just seemed perfect for us to do that. And uh, we did it all in-house, thanks to Jeff knowing everything about, you know, the behind scene of recording, mixing, and producing. So you actually did it, like, at your house? Or how did you record the whole album? So one of the songs we did at a a buddy of ours studio called Maldek in Mm -hmm. uh, Salisbury. Yeah. So we had done uh, drums and vocals for the first song that it were kind of planting the seeds for the album. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, once everything started shutting down, we um, these guys already had requested time off from their jobs at the time to <laughs> for the tour. So we drove down to Florida and uh, pretty much locked ourselves in a in a group, you know, a finished garage and recorded everything there. Um, we laid the foundation for the rest of the tracks, and yeah, that's kind of what jump started that. You know, just making good use of the the canceled time because of the tour. I know. I think with everything going on with COVID, everyone's either taking it and making it something better in their situation or just completely been devastating. But it sounds like you guys are actually taking this time and changing things. And you mentioned Florida. Yes. When we were talking, I was asking them on email, like just some things we want to talk about. And it said they were moving to Florida and we got to talk about this. What's Mm -hmm. going on? How, why Florida? What's happening? And you said you had jobs. Had. (laughs) Yeah. Past it. (laughs) Yeah. I'll I'll start this one off and then then throw it their way. So, um, Yeah, I guess basically like what we were just saying is when when stuff started shutting down, you could either, I guess, kind of stay and stay with what you're doing at the time, or you can really dedicate yourself to something. So what we decided to do was really dedicate ourselves to our music. Uh, we had just dropped our like a four song EP and just had a really great show at the Evening Muse. So we were really motivated. So we just started working on our songs hardcore every weekend. We were playing, you know, hours a day, and we decided that we saw a pathway, I guess, you know, whenever we get through COVID, you know, at the time we didn't know the extent of it, but we saw that there was a pathway to us becoming full-time musicians with these songs, with how we're playing shows, it makes us feel with how we interact with the audience. So we decided kind of early into it that, you know, this is something we can do and we needed an album to, to really make that a possibility and a new van. So we got the new van <laughs> and then it was just up to Jeff to make us, this beautiful album and and that's all we had to do but i'll let i'll let jeff uh, take it from why we're going to florida in general yeah yeah so that's um we're moving to clearwater which is my hometown oh. and it's perfect timing because you know just starting to turn cold a little bit and <laughs> outside shows are going to be harder and harder to come by in these coming months in north carolina so you know being a a live band you know per- relying on that primarily for our income we're going to need some outdoors and you know socially distant shows that we can kind of take advantage of since those are pretty much going to dry up pretty soon here. So, mm-hmm. yep. yeah. So that was the main reason for the switch is outdoor shows. Is yeah, that what outdoor shows? And um, that way we have a home base while we kind of get up and running, you know, and we can, you know, save up a little money and do it in a nice chill environment. That's crazy. So what does that leave with your North Carolina fans? Are they going to have to drive to Florida? Are you coming back anytime? <laughs> happening? We'll come to oh, yeah. We'll, we'll <laughs> come back to North Carolina. We love the fan base here. Mm-hmm. It's been incredible. And so no doubt that in the near future, we're coming back to North Kakalaki and playing some music. I love okay. it. Well, I'm excited, too, because have the you other two really been in Florida besides recording? Is this going to be like a brand new switch up change for you guys? Absolutely. I've... Uh, when I moved to the States, I moved to North Carolina. Mm-hmm. I've been in Charlotte for three years, now about six, seven years in Winston. So mm-hmm. that's really what I know. I'm super excited to go for a new adventure down in Florida. And by be by the beach, I mean, that's ideal. Yeah. <laughs> True. I have a good yeah. amount of friends in Florida, so I'll have to sync you guys up with some of those people. But it's well, if you guys right. don't know, 
my guitar player is from Florida. So, and then we work with the agents. There's a lot of stuff in Florida. So it's a good town. It's a good town. I'm not sure about Cluro, but obviously Jeff probably knows a lot more people because he's from there. <laughs> but, <laughs> no doubt. But anywho, I love it. Like, let's just talk about future. What's the plans going forward after this album? After everyone's heard it, they love it. They fall in love with you. What's what's going forward? What's the future for you guys? I think we want to get you know the idea of who we are out and live to people. And right now, it's a difficult time for us to be thinking, you know, how are we going to be able to perform when shows are at an all time low? Mm -hmm. um, but we want people to know that we aren't just you know we aren't just doing music. We're here to entertain people. It's much more than music. Um, and the fact that we like to fuse whatever we got into it. I think is what makes us distinct. And you can see it at our shows where people are dancing. We come out in crazy attire, um, <laughs> songs that sometimes have comedy breakdowns in the middle. <laughs> it's just the way we like to do things because we want to keep people on the tip of their toes. I love that. And you were talking about like influences and different stuff that you do. Like, what do you feel like pulls into your shows? Cause you were talking about dressing up. You were talking about how, like, where do you get all that inspiration from? Where does it like pour in from? If Probably makes all have different like, influences and we can go all around you know talk about it i mean someone who i've always admired as a showman is david bowie that guy is yeah. incredible mm -hmm. great music but also like you'd go to a show and it wasn't just music you you saw a spectacle and <laughs> that's just incredible in my opinion yeah that's yeah i really like the show aspect of it too you know because you can be the best player in the world or whatever but if you're just sitting there stone-faced you know, maybe it's not as fun as somebody who's not as good, but, you know, really puts on a show and kind of puts their soul into it. And I think the theatrical element is a lot of fun and, you know, you can really get creative with it because then you can pull from stuff outside of music, you know, just to, to get your kicks and to pass them along to other people. Oh yeah, definitely. And, and yeah, so anyone who's listening to this that may not be able to make a show um, in, in the near future on our Instagram, we do a lot of these weird, Skip. Yes. It's kind of the same idea. Just, I don't know. Whatever comes to the top of our head, we just do some kooky things and record it. And mm -hmm. it's usually with you know some promotion aspect. But we just we just like having fun and and like we've said a few times, like going beyond music and just basically you know interacting with people. That's what we love the most. And and you'll see that live, and you'll see that on our videos, and yeah. hopefully in our music too. You know that's what we that's one of our influences. Yeah, I know. That's what I was talking about earlier. I love following you guys on Instagram for the fact it's pure entertainment yeah. every time <laughs> I play them. See, that's, what's really good about you guys as musicians. And I think Jeff pointed that out as well. A lot of times people think that just having great art and being talented is enough, which is really a good step, but also being able to have that show and have that marketing aspect. I mean, it really pulls everything together because even looking at like your Spotify numbers, you've pulled a ton of people over into Spotify. Uh, that's really hard for a lot of people and there's a lot of good talented people. So it sounds like you guys are really pulling it off. That being said, one thing about this podcast that I like, we do um, music, music enlightenment and just music business stuff. I'd like to go around and ask everyone, what's something that maybe now they wish the younger version of themselves would have known starting out in music? So feel free, any kind of advice, because a lot of people right now that are listening are at different stages of their career. And I'd love to get, especially from you guys, and especially coming from your genre, what you're doing just some like tidbits of stuff that you would do and give advice for. Big question. <laughs> yeah, I got something prepared. Um, this is more specific to my experience in music because from essentially sixth grade until the end of college, I was strictly a classical musician. Um, and there's so much more to music than just classical. And nowadays I use aspects of my classical training into what I do, but I think, you got the more open mind you have as you start your musical career, the more you'll be able to learn and appreciate as to what music can truly be. So, you know, take a jazz course when you're in college and learn a little bit of that and see how that may influence you. Learn about music that is not Western music to understand how do people appreciate music from a completely different culture. So that's kind of what I wish younger me would have started on a little bit earlier. Yeah. Got something there? Yeah, sure. Uh, um, yeah, so I guess this is speaking more to the music business. Uh, what we've learned that, you know, maybe the next upcoming set of bands can learn is, I guess, like you just said, it's even if you're the best band in the world, uh, people may not listen to your music, but when you build these relationships, so after shows, you know, talking to everyone that comes, you're just 
thanking them like profusely, hitting them up and, and asking them what they like, what they don't like, getting to know the people that you're making music for to make them feel like they're part of the process. Yeah. And, and they're, they're like almost investing in you. Then as we keep growing, they're always going to be interested in our, in our music and what we have going on. So I think, mm-hmm. you know, really investing in your fans and, and just thinking of it more as friends. I think that's what we, what one of the things we're good at is really caring about the people who listen to our music and, yeah. and good vice point. versa. And it, it, and it means a lot and it, it hopefully helps. Yeah. Yeah. It's all about relationship building, you know? Um, yeah. So I would say something kind of similar to Londo, but um, as far as you know, music and I would probably say jam is jam is with as many people as you can um, early on, you know, because even if somebody is a lot better or a lot you know worse than you, usually you can kind of learn something from somebody, and that way you can you know incorporate their ideas and whatever into your vocabulary. And I'm um, saying for like listening to all kinds of different music and all that stuff, like just really steep yourself in all kinds of different things because you never know how it's going to show up later, you know, either in your practice or in your playing. Um, Because sooner or later, it'll, it'll, your influences will find its way out, I think. No, I love that. And I love, especially talking about making people feel like somebody and feeling like your friends. I think that's a huge thing. Learning your craft, like all these are such great things. And I hope everyone listening takes that in, breathes it in and takes some of that advice. (laughs) Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a it's a collective effort, you know. We do it obviously for ourselves because we enjoy the arts, but also how great is it when we can get people to presently be a part of our shows when we're doing it live, just to be listening to our music and it becomes a, co- a community thing. Well, do you actually bring people into your shows as well, like have them be a part of the show? I have not got the pleasure of seeing you guys full live yet, except backing other bands. <laughs> <It's ironic>. <laughs> <laughs> but I've seen you guys play in certain things, just not all together. But like, what what does a typical show look look like for you guys with fan interaction? Well, one of our quotes is that every Bad Cameo show is a guaranteed all-out dance party. Yep. So there's that to start. Oh, so. Yeah. Yeah, gotta shake it. So when we're on stage, we're shaking it. Um, I mean, Lando, Lando is in front of the mic with his guitar, and he is never st- um, standing still. So that's the first thing. And and that, people really dig that. And so then I'm on the drums, um, start leaning forward and back, and then Jeff starts moving. And then, you know, ev- everyone in the audience just feels that energy, and they start moving with us. So that's the first thing. Um, we also always bring some props. Yeah. So in the pre-COVID <laughs> days, uh, we have stuff oh, fish that will be thrown around the audience <laughs> and, you know so you can think of it as a dance partner partner more of like a missile that'll fly between groups of people um but it's just an interactive element and you know we have some uh we have a show from the evening muse that's online and if you're watching it um you just see these fish flying around they might <laughs> they may or may not you know hit some lights and maybe break a bowl or two but um but yeah but it's also doing business yeah it's a <laughs> I feel there? like the big question is, what are these fish and why? <laughs> <laughs> well, we played a charity show uh, for the Restore in Winston-Salem. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're like, yeah, sure. This is a great cause. And we weren't getting really paid for much. It was just more to get exposure, but to also just be nice and part of the community. Um, as we were packing up, we <laughs> saw this giant fish pillow mm-hmm. uh, as a giant <laughs> a bass. And we're like, hey, what's up with this fish pillow? What's it doing back here? And they're like, oh, we just got that, but no one wants it. You guys can take it as form of your payment. <laughs> um, this was really early on when we first started jamming as a band. And we're like, any form of payment will do. We will take this fish pillow. Oh, great fish. And since then, the family of fish have grown to four. So <laughs> They're multiplying. Yeah, it's it's great. It's great. I mean, some people throw around the big balloons and whatever, but you guys are like, no, we're going to be different. We're going to throw around fish. That's our version. And now that we're moving to Florida, I mean, by the sea, (laughs) it just makes sense. It makes perfect sense. Isn't that kind of crazy how that all walked out? Oh, my gosh. That's fantastic. Well, and you guys are going to still be roommates as well in Florida, it sounds like. Oh, Oh, yes. That's fantastic. I'm excited for you guys. I hope the future is even brighter than it is now. And it's looking pretty good right now. So I'm excited for you guys to come. I also want to, before we get off, I want to let everybody know where they can find you. Obviously, I'm going to put this in the show notes. If you're driving, please don't wreck trying to find this information because I know you want to. So let's actually tell you guys where you can find them. Well, Instagram is probably our most popular just like form of getting to know the band. Um, on, when it comes to social media specifically at Bad Cameo Music, it's uh, pretty easy to find us. Um, 
We also have a Facebook page. Look up Bad Cameo. It's one word, by the way. Uh, but Spotify is probably our best site to find all of our music if you want to listen to it. Mm -hmm. um, following an independent artist on Spotify, adding a song to a playlist, saving it. It's really easy to do, and it goes a huge way for us. So yeah. if anyone's listening and they like what they heard so <laughs> far, please go check out us. Uh, check out Bad Cameo on Spotify. Yes, and I'm actually going to link the new album. You guys have to check it out. It's spectacular. As I said, every song is a new adventure. So we're going to put that on the show notes with, along with all the social media. So we're going to have a lot of people check you guys out. And thanks so much for coming on. You guys are the best. I'm so excited for y'all. Thanks. Thanks. Thank yeah, thank you so much. Thank you for joining us this week on the Enlightened Musician podcast. Make sure to visit our website, theenlightenedmusician.com, where you can subscribe to the show on your platform of choice so you'll never miss an episode. Until next time, this is Lauren Light.